everyone, welcome to Car Q&A episode one. This time we're gonna be featuring Logics. In this series, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be going into a fun few 1v1s in Overwatch while I uh, ask Logics about his life. Andreas, all the way from Belgium. What was your favorite thing about growing up in Belgium as we hammer each other? For me personally, growing up in Belgium, I, I was raised in a very small town, so it was fun getting to know like Basically everyone around my town, it was like... Did you say it was a small town? Yeah, a very small town. How many people, roughly? Population? Like maybe 2,000? 2, 2,000 people! Oh, that is... Like, so it was really, really not that, uh, really not that big. So you, you'd most like know the people, like if you went to school, like most of the people around you were all already your friends. You know? Oh, so, dude, so rumors and spread and all that kind of stuff pretty fast too, right? Oh my god. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Anything goes, you know, especially like... The moment one rumor is leaked, it basically everyone knows, you know, it's a, it's wide news. I'm not very well traversed. I've never really been, God, um, I haven't really been to Europe and uh, I had to learn a lot about like um, languages and stuff through the online world. So in Belgium, I know you told me you speak Dutch, but are you fluent in other languages as well? So in Belgium, uh, it's like split in two major parts, I'd say. So the northern part speaks Dutch, the southern part speaks French. And then mm. very east of Belgium, we have a couple cities that speak German, so it's an official language as well, but not nearly as much people speak that. I personally got raised in Antwerp, Anvers, which uh, is like northern part of Belgium, so I got raised speaking Dutch, but we learned the opposite language um, during school. Okay, so you, you can speak a bit of French and um, German, or at least understand it-ish? Uh, German, German only because it's similar to Dutch, but I never really studied it in school. Um, and French is because we learned in school, yeah. So I'm fluent in Dutch, fluent in English, and then I'm more than fine to handle myself in French as well. Wait a minute. Ah, fair, These one fair, ones dude. are just, you are actually steam rolls. just yeah, actually this, this is just the result of my face. I'm using the I'm using the wrong hammer. I'm using mm. the wrong skin. Although oh, or maybe I'm using the right skin at this point. Who knows? It's just the powerhouse of Mangachu coaching. Alright, moving on to the next question. Uh, what was your first job? Or have you been a professional player like, your whole life? Uh, I was basically able to go from studying directly into gaming. Uh, when I first started off playing Overwatch, uh, I got noticed uh, by playing on the ladder. I joined my first team. Uh, eventually got kicked from that team for not being good enough. But pretty uh, pretty quick later on, I got signed to, to Mouse Sports, uh, which was a really big German EU orc. Uh, yeah, I've heard of Mouse Sports and Counter-Strike. Yeah, they were a very big name. Um, which later on didn't end up re-signing us because they wanted to uh, seek out different opportunities. But then mm -hmm. I got picked up uh, on my first full-time uh, pro contract by Movistar Riders. Obviously, it ended up being a pretty solid EU team, but... Who was on that roster at the time? Uh, on the roster was me, uh, Dante, Swoosh, Finzi, uh, Kolsi, and Neptuno. Well, so those are some pretty big names. A lot of them are, you know, professionals or former professionals are still. Yeah. And why am I starting this round with less than 50? I have 235 wait. out of 250. Oh, wait, this is a handicap. All right, whatever. You needed it. Don't worry. I'm going to roll the you four here. Four says that, definitely. <laughs> um, oh, so that's a pretty big. So that was your first roster. Or sorry, that was. um. Uh, team first place for you. First that, professional team that you played. That was also my first time traveling for gaming, obviously. Ended up moving mm -hmm. to Spain, which was, which was pretty big at the age of 18, just kind of. Oh, leaving. so you guys had to move for that original team yeah, as well? Yeah, the, like the reason house. why it was such like a big offer for us was because at the time, the most notable EU teams, I'd say, were EU United and Misfits. So all those teams were playing from home, but. Uh, Movistar Riders came to us with an offer that they were building out a brand new facility uh, and they were able to house us in an apartment in the middle of Spain in Madrid uh, which was obviously like I mean instantly for us was like yeah I mean of course let's go yeah let's go were there any sort of um no talk to me uh, about any sort of like struggles of uh, moving out for the first time especially with like a group of uh, people you just met online were there any sort of things that you were surprised about when uh, living with other people for the first time this it's, I think it's it, the strange part was obviously we were all relatively young. I think we were all around the age of 18 and 20. Oh, uh, so moving into house together, I think Some I think at that age you don't mind nearly as much. But looking back at it, how messy and unorganized we were, like there was oh, just God. trash everywhere. People didn't really look after themselves. Uh, like it was quite literally degeneracy. But at the time it was like, yeah. But at the time it was like you're living in it. You're part of it. It's like. At that point, I don't know, it wasn't nearly as bad. But if I think back on it now, it's just like, yeah, that's like, 
That was really gross, actually. Oh, wow. Um, well, and after that, how did that eventually be, uh, end up with you um, moving to Misfits? What was the pathway after? Um... Uh, so when we were part of Movistar Riders, uh, we were part of them for a couple of months. Uh, and then later on, we just finished up a local Spanish land, which we ended up winning. Uh, we had a sit down with the organization and they basically wanted to focus more on the Spanish market. Obviously, um, we only had one Spanish player. Uh, so they decided that they would focus on different esports for the time. Uh, and at that time, uh, Misfits wasn't performing up to par or to their expectations. So uh, because they were a bunch of sweets, uh, they reached out to Swoosh, uh, our main tank at the time. Uh, our flex DPS at the time, sorry. Uh, to play main oh, tank. Oh, he's flex DPS. Yeah, yeah didn't he flex play DPS. tank in... Oh, yeah, wow. he, he played tank, tank in the Overwatch League. Yeah, but. so that's actually uh, the team where he swapped the role from flex DPS to tank. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how close he was with the Swedes at the time, but they initially talked uh, Swoosh into joining. Uh, and then later on, uh, I got asked to join as well because they were looking for a new DPS player. Mm -hmm. um, so me and Swoosh kind of got uh, brought along to Misfits and obviously ended up being a very successful team. All right, making it all the way to um, EU Contenders Finals. But then ultimately falling to Team Giganti in uh, what best of best of seven, a right? Best of seven, a brutal best, best of seven. seven. Yo, take me back to that EU Contenders Finals. Um, I think you guys were down three to one, went back up to three to three, but ultimately lost. Was there anything interesting that came up from that series? So I think to to put a little background, it was like our entire online season. I think in grand total, we lost two maps out of thirty. So we had like a super successful online. Yeah, like we completely destroyed everyone in EU, and then we end up flying out to Burbank, California, uh, for the containers final. We end up struggling really bad for the C9 EU, which at the time we were considered to be vastly better. Uh, so that was already like kind of a sign for us, like, oh, maybe we're not doing nearly as good as we right. did online. Was it people's comfort? Like, I think in general, uh, our communication was like vastly different than it was online. Oh. Um, Rolled. It, it was it was really tough for us to make that adjustment on the fly. So, but we ended up beating C9 EU, uh, and then moving on to the finals to Giganti. So, like for me, the most notable thing about the entire series is. So obviously it was kind of the beginning of containers. I think the rule set wasn't quite set in stone as it is right now. But there was this silly thing in the rule set that allowed teams to repick a map that was already played. So with it being a best of seven, we ended up playing Icon Walder uh, and Temple of Anubis twice, which is kind of ridiculous if you think about it. If that would happen in Overwatch League, I think people would just burst out laughing. <laughs> yeah, uh, no kidding. The reason I think that went to the distance was like we ended up winning Icon twice, and they ended up winning uh, Anubis twice, I think. So they're the ones who picked Anubis, and you're the, you guys are the ones that picked uh, Icon. Yeah, so we we ended up losing the first map. We lost we lost King of the Hill to them. Then we picked Icon Vault. We won that map, so they picked their comfort map, which was Anubis. They won that map. Uh, right. Then we went to a different map. We lost our pick, so we got to pick again. And somehow, I don't know who on the team honestly found out, but we noticed that we could pick Icon again because the rules didn't like, you know, the rules stop you from yeah, doing it. it. So we were like, oh. guys, we're down a map and we got to pick and it's not stopping <laughs> us from picking the map we already won. Let's just like absolutely just go for it, you know, like. And Bren, we have something interesting here that we haven't seen too much in Overwatch where we are going back to a map we played earlier in the series, a uh, unique feature of a best of seven where Misfits, they're bringing us back to the Grand Castle, the Viking Vault. Absolutely, this is uh, this is a first in, in many ways for Overwatch here. We're going to be seeing Eichenvold once again played. But uh, ultimately, I know in that final game you guys fell. What went through your head personally and as a team? Was there some sort of team meeting? How did you guys all feel um, working so hard for the season and then, you know, losing in those grand finals? Did it hurt a lot or were you guys like, mm, you know, optimistic and you felt good about yourselves? No, it, go? it definitely, definitely hurt. I mean, especially... Mm -hmm. The rumors of Overwatch League being a thing at that time were already, you know, brewing, you know? Uh, oh, so the Overwatch League wasn't announced yet? No, I, as far as I can remember, or it might have been announced, but the teams that were participating weren't announced. Like we heard, you know, from our organization that Misfits, obviously now Florida Mayhem, was like looking to buy a spot. So, I mean, in, in the back of our minds, it's like, oh, we kind of have to win yeah. this, you know? Like, oh, we want to showcase yeah. to the org that, you know, we have what it takes. We want to be their Overwatch League team. Um, so for us to lose to Giganti was kind of like, ouch, you know, we can do so well online. We come to a LAN environment, which is basically the entirety of what Overwatch League is going to be. 
uh, and then we don't end up performing like we do. So that was like, that was honestly a pretty big hit, uh, pretty big hit for our team. I mean, I'm ultimately, even though you lost, uh, the Misfits still got picked up by the um, Overwatch League, which became the Florida mayhem of that season. For those um, who, uh, who don't know. Um, so now, obviously, we saw the results of Overwatch League Season 1. Florida Mayhem, you guys didn't do as well as you probably expected uh, you guys to do with the amount of talent on that roster. Mm -hmm. um, if you could maybe take me through, you know, how that season went in, in general. Like, obviously, I know it didn't do well, but like, were there any sort of struggles that you can kind of like talk openly about or candidly about or maybe some of the good things about, you know? Yeah, so... It's definitely the the good times from Florida Mayhem to me personally was like that was probably one of the only teams where I legit felt like I was family to my teammates when they they were family to me. We were so close as a group of guys. Uh, like we lived in a house together. It was all fun. I think that's all honestly one of the big reasons as to why we you know we had a sheer amount of wins, but the sheer amount of wins we had because uh, our mental you know stayed sane. You know like we we obviously went through a lot of hardships. We went through a lot of losses. Um, but as a team, I think being so close together and being able to back each other up was always uh, important. Um, oh, I think as far as... So. Yeah, and I think as far as our struggles went for Season 1, um, I think a lot of it was just underestimating the competition. I think a lot of the time when you just play in your own region, you probably end up being in a bubble, you know, like... We're like, oh, you know, we lost the LAN final, but it was 4-3, like we still dominated everyone online. What's going to be the big deal if we're already the best EU team? What's going to be the big deal to play versus Koreans, you know, Americans, anything like that? So I, I do think in general, like us or the organization, uh, definitely underestimated the competition for season one. I think that was pretty noticeable already in stage one. Uh, later on, we did try and add some additions, but I don't think that fixed some of our core issues as a team. Uh, obviously, we added Saya player as another hit scan, and we added an uh, awesome guy, later SNT, uh, as one of the main tanks. And then, you know, speaking of mental, um, the, men the, uh, the mental state that some of the players go through with the struggles, I mean, you personally, after that season, uh, had, to, had to bounce around, right? After making it to the Overwatch League, you, you had to move around to um, Academy teams, if I'm mm -hmm. correct, uh, XL2 yep. and Montreal Rebellion. Correct. You know, what kind of goes through your mind when you, you know, you make it to the Overwatch League and it feels amazing, even despite the struggles, like you were there, but then having to kind of, I don't want to say move down, but you kind of have to like fight for, for a spot again and reprove yourself. Like, what is that? How did, how did you um, deal with that? So it was definitely like a mentally a weird way to think about, uh, obviously being part of Florida Mayhem. I think a lot of players' careers got um, not not tarnished. I think that's a little harsh, but obviously people looked at people in different limelight. Uh, you know, what were considered some of the best EU players, obviously on the grand scheme of things, did look like weaker players after season one. Right, uh, just I because think, like the team doesn't do, do well, sometimes individually people like like might see them differently, even though that might not totally be true. Like individually, you're all still really talented, but it's just sometimes the team cohesion yeah. and synergy just isn't there. Mm -hmm, exactly. So I think for me personally, I was one of the lucky people who, I think through public perception, uh, I think I was always regarded still as a good player on the bad team, uh, which quite frankly, I'm very grateful for. Uh, mm. Obviously, I'm very open about taking blame for things that happened with Mayhem, um, as well as, you know, the, the blame is, you're, you're in a team together, you know, there's not a single person to blame. I made mistakes, my teammates made mistakes, our orc made mistakes, staff, whatever. Um, so I think for me to go down to containers, was kind of unfortunate um it wasn't necessarily something i didn't expect um i had a couple offers but some of them fell through uh because of it it's hard to Bunch talk about reasons. offers publicly i think yeah 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 uh, you don't have to pry too far yeah. into it but just you had a couple uh, of i had a couple offers and that fell through because the way they interacted with each other uh and just generally like that uh kind of ruined my opportunity to join season two uh right from the beginning uh so, I mean, I was more than happy, you know. I knew I had an opportunity to join, that fell through. Uh, I knew myself as a player. I was still very confident going into anything, whether that be Overwatch League or Contenders. So, um, being able to join XL2, who was at the time one of the better Contenders teams, uh, you know, I was very excited to play with some of the players on that roster. Um, so, it was a setback, but in my mind, it was you know, a, a needed step for me. 
kind of like how it, it helped you you know regather yourself you know you, you knew what you still had what it takes it was just a matter of time and obviously like after xl2 to Montreal rebellion then finally you've landed this round of fight which you've called home in the last uh almost two years now right or, yeah it's kind of crazy almost two years almost two years it's kind of crazy how much time has passed the pandemic here kind of just passed right by us and holy yeah. crap destroyed me in this tour 1v1 just uh just not already on the job what can i say all right now we're on to the widow 1v1 and i this is not gonna even be close oh god what is happening? Wait, oh, it's like little, yeah, just Whoa, little blocks wait. that kind of uh, give us some cover, I guess. So yeah, it randomizes so. a bit. Oh. All right, now I'm gonna move on to um, a couple of fun questions. We're gonna do a little section that I like to call the Toronto slang. Now this might just be like millennial slang. Some people who watch this who are like um, the new Gen Z or like some of the older, uh, ooh, <laughs> some of the older folks who are watching this are gonna be like, huh? What are these? And th these are the words or terms that I grew up with, um, at least through high school, university and stuff a couple of years ago. So maybe they're not even common anymore. I don't know. I've been living in my own like, you know, quarantine bubble at home. I haven't really been socializing as much. So, all right, a little bit of Toronto slang. We'll start easy. Okay, you're just gonna try to- um, I'll try and guess, just guess what it means. Guess what it means. All okay, right, okay. first one's easy. Link up. Meet up. Yeah, that one's, I feel like that's just not even Toronto. Yeah. That's just everywhere. I mean, I mean that's just like general, yeah. Yeah, all right. Up uh, next one. Uh, do you know what cheese means? Like, if I use it in a sentence like, I'm cheesed, or don't cheese me. Don't cheese me, bro. I mean, I know it from like a video game standpoint, but unless it has a different mean. Me. You like joking? What do you. No, not joking. Try again. <laughs> no, joking, joking, joking. Oh, joking? No, no. Uh, it's not joking. All right, let me try to use a different sentence. Um, you know, this person I was texting didn't reply back. They're cheesing me. They're like ghosting right. you. They're ignoring no, you. No, actually, that, that's a pretty bad explanation. Okay, I'm terrible at putting it in a sentence, but it basically <laughs> means like um, uh, like angry or annoyed. At least that's how I used to use it, uh, or how people around me used it. It's like, oh, this, this person's cheesing me, like. They're really annoying me, or they're angering me in a slight way. How come cheese? Cheese, cheese, cheese is a good I, thing. You know what? Oh. Watch, I know, right? All right, the next one is uh, arms. Like, and it's sometimes combined with the word bear arms. Like, that's arms, man. Like, you're destroying me. You're destroying me in this 1v1. That's arms. What? That's bear arms. But now you're just putting around the mercy sentences, no? Bear arms. Uh... Arms. What? Actually, no clue. Wait, I'm going. Okay, no clue. This one, actually, this one, this one is a bit more like my first explanation of cheese. Maybe I got it mixed up a little bit. But arms also means like really annoying. Impeccable. Like that's arms, or like really inconveniencing. Like this person forgot to pay me back. That's arms. I just. That's bare I, arms. I just wonder where some of these are coming from. The uh, cheese one and this one to me are like. How do they make sense? Don't what? ask me. <laughs> Don't even ask me. Uh, winnable, winnable. Oh! oh no. <laughs> Did you style on me? Yeah, yeah a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Well, and that's it for Car Q&A, episode one with Andreas, Mr. Logics. Thank you so much for joining me, and uh, we'll catch you guys next time.